Hi, Joe Pizinski here with Advanced Innovations. The other day, I posted a video on how to make an angle block. And if you are drilling holes in parts at an angle, chances are the part is on the angle and the machine is true. And somewhere along the line, there's a dimension you have to hit. So I'm going to show you how you can set up to dial in a specific dimension for a hole on an angle on a part. And let me draw it out so you can see it. I'm going to try to draw it big so the GoPro can pick it up. And before we start, that shelf unit right there is actually straight. That is the peripheral distortion from the GoPro lens. And I know that it probably looks like it got hit by a heat ray and melted. It's actually straight. And this board is nice and rectangular. This isn't some kind of uh, bad dream you're having. Install the part in here. And here's your feature. Somebody asked you to pop a hole in this part at 20 degrees. At a given dimension from this corner to that point in it goes. The dimension is here. A lot of people are going to say it's no big deal. I am just going to take an edge finder and bump up against this corner and move over a, a given dimension. I'll show you how that works. That is not quite 90 and it's going to bother me so I'm going to straighten it out. Alright, that is much better. This is the dimension given on the print right here. This is the triangle that you're going to need to figure out. Right there. So you have the information you need to know what this move is. You have the angle because your part is currently sitting on a super accurate 20 degree angle block that you made. So you know all the information there is to know. The top is a given, the bottom is a calculated based on the 20 degree angle. Everything is there. Everything is there except where is that corner. So if you think you're going to come in with an edge finder and bump it, if it's a razor sharp corner, you know it's a razor sharp corner, then you got it made. Bump this edge with your edge finder and move over based on that triangle right there. But if it's not a sharp corner and you divert it, you have a broken corner and now that triangle went away because you just wiped the nose off the place where your edge finder should have hit. So now what do you do? Let me show you a trick on how to do this. This is a really good trick. Take a parallel or a piece of material and clamp it to the end of your part. Squeeze it on the end of your part, okay? Drop a gauge pin in there so that it lays in the trough created by the surface of your part and that particular parallel. I'm going to try to draw a nice circle in here so that I can draw everything real big and it all works out fairly well. Ah, not bad. Okay, just for sake of this example, I'm going to say that's a one inch diameter, which is fairly large. I personally would probably use something smaller like a 400 or 500 drill blank because I have a bunch of half inch drill blanks in my box. Roll it across the surface plate, make sure it's true, and then stick it in there. Okay, so that being said, radius 500. When you bring your edge finder down and you contact this pin, it's going to hit the tangent point of that pin out here. Straight through to the center, okay? So we know this is 500 because it's the radius of the pin. You know what this is. Now all you need to do is find this right there. And this is where it, it may get a little tricky. If you strike a line parallel to your parallel, no pun intended, through this pin, it's going to look something like this. And it's going to end up on the other tangent point.
this will end up to be the same angle as the given on your on your print 20 degrees what's this leg it's the radius of the pin because it goes from the center to the tangent 500 so now you have a triangle that looks like this and if you do this quite a bit you don't have to draw it down you'll just come up with a couple of triangles and a couple of numbers that you subtract from each other and all of a sudden you found your point so you have a 20 degree triangle with a long leg of 500 now why is that important well when you go to your tool tables or your uh, functions in your trig book if you got that Illinois Toolworks book that I told you to get, because that's amazing, gotta have one. These are the values that you're gonna come up with. This is gonna be 0.4698, and that is 0.500, which is this one, times the cosine of 20 degrees, We'll give you this. This side here is 171. And that formula is 0.500 times the sine of 20 degrees. And unfortunately, if you're a machinist, if you're a toolmaker, if you're an engineer, you're going to have to get comfortable with or be exposed to basic geometric construction and trigonometry as a byproduct of your environment. It's unavoidable unless you're using some CAD system and these numbers are just magically jumping off the screen. You should be able to figure this out sitting at your bench with a calculator and a trig book and just make it happen because we don't all have computers and fancy software sitting on our desks. Trust me, I cut my teeth on this. I know this is not easy, but once you do it, you look at it and you laugh and you wonder why you were ever afraid of it. Okay. You have your triangle figured out. You only need to figure out this one triangle to position that pin because okay, the long leg of the top triangle that we just figured out is 500. Well, guess what? This one right here to the point is also 500. It's the same triangle, exactly. If you were to take this triangle out and plug it on right there, you've got a 20 degree nose angle, 20 degrees, 500 long side, 500 long side. How do I know that? Because the radius that makes contact at the tangent up against that parallel, that's 500. Drag it down, there it is, 500. Exact same triangle. Now if you have all these values, you have everything that you need to find this point. How you say? Okay, well, here's point 171 here, 500. So you know that this resultant side is 500 minus the 171 and if you were to just make a dotted line down here this little segment of the bottom triangle is also 171 but the whole thing is 469.8 so you know what this is so if you take this dimension right here and add it to this dimension right here you have your shift from here to here. It's a given. You can also use this particular geometry if you need to cut a step in a part at a given angle, given height. You can locate from the top of your pin and know where this is by just drawing all the triangles in an opposite direction. Now I'm going to remove this last one here because that's probably just going to confuse you if you put this on pause and stare at it. This triangle right here is the most important one that you're going to need, and it's going to be the only one that you're going to need. So long as you have the lengths of all those sides, you can plug and play, and you can take things out and put things in, and you can come up with all the numbers that you need from point of contact to that corner right there. Okay? Once you have your dimension here on the print at 20 degrees, figure out the bottom leg, shift over, you're going to come down right on that point, every time guaranteed. If you want to check your numbers in a right triangle where the bottom corner is 90 degrees, the formula for checking the numbers that you come up with is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That means a and b 
let's say 0.171 times 0.171 plus 0.4698 times 0.4698 equals 0.500 times 0.500. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Check it out. Try it. This is a great technique. And I'll post another video sometime in the near future to show you how to measure a part if you've made a part that has an angle on it. And whoever dimensioned that part says, I want this specific dimension right here, dead nuts, at this specific angle. I'll post that one too. Leave me a comment. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. I appreciate all the feedback. Uh, if there's something specific you need clarified on this, chances are you're not alone. Post it in the comment line. I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'm out.